we want to extend to you a, a very, very special welcome. And, uh, and just to kind of let you know what we've been doing uh, the last few weeks here is uh, we've been uh, going through and looking at some of our values that we have as a church. Week number one, Andy talked about faith, how we have a great faith. Uh, we are faith-filled and uh, we're big thinking uh, in, in, uh, in the way that we see God working in us, not only where we have been or where we are, but where he is taking us. Uh, we will never insult God by small thinking or fearful living. And uh, Andy preached it a few weeks ago, and Andy is living it right now. And he has been, really, for the last couple of weeks, um, uh, to, to go forward, uh, moving forward in faith with big, huge faith. That's the way we roll at Central Christian Church. Week number two, Andy talked about serving. Uh, we are not merely spiritual consumers, Rather, we are spiritual contributors because the church does not exist for us. Rather, we are the church and we <coughs> exist for the world. It's not about us. It's about those that are yet to come to Jesus. Last week, I talked about generosity and we will lead with irrational generosity. Uh, the reason that we do that is not because we have to, because we really believe what Jesus said when he said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Now, today, I'd like to talk with you about something that is very near, very dear to my heart. I want to talk about you, to, with you, about the, our value of reaching people who are far from God. Now we're going to be going into Mark's Gospel today. So if you just open up the Gospel of Mark or you have an app or whatever you guys do like that. I mean, um, you know, however you do that, you all know me, I'm old school, but you have some other way to find that, go ahead and do it. Whatever you do, do it. Mark chapter 2. Go ahead and turn to that, get hold of that, and we'll be right there. We're going to start at the end of this chapter, and then we're going to work our way backward uh, toward the beginning of the chapter. But, first of all, let me just uh, give the context of the verse that we're going to launch from. <coughs> See, Jesus had just healed this guy. Uh, this was a guy called Matthew, or Levi. And he was a very sinful tax collector. And I know some of you are saying, is there any other kind? No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not serious about that. We, we love the, the, the tax collector, right? Yes, we do. <laughs> Jesus said we have to. I'm just kidding. All of you in taxes out there, we do love you. Jesus loves you. Okay. Um, to the, but Jesus here calls Levi to follow him. And to the shock of all the religious people, this well-known sinner not only follows Jesus, but he throws a party at his house and invites, evidently, some other very questionable characters. People that had a reputation for being sinners. Now the Pharisees in this story, who are the religious people, are highly offended by this. They're like, why does Jesus eat with sinners? Except, I don't think they said it like that. I think they said it like religious people do. Why does Jesus eat with those sinners? Why does Jesus eat with the sinners, right? But here's where it really starts to get good. Mark chapter 2, verse 17. Jesus responds to their smug, self-righteous questioning. It says, it is not the healthy who need a doctor but the sick. Then his next statement totally blew the Pharisee's mind. He says, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So who did 
Jesus come to call? Yes, sinners. Jesus came to call the sinners. And you know, to me, this is really an emotional verse. When you recognize that Jesus did not come for the healthy, but he came for the sick. He didn't come for those who already thought they were right or were righteous. But he came for sinners. Jesus did not come for those who think they have it all together. He came for the unrighteous. He came for the sick, the confused, and the broken. He came for sinners. Jesus came for you and me. And isn't that why we are here today? Jesus came for sinners. That's why we love to come to church at Central. That's why we love to invite and bring our friends to church. That's why every week at Central Church is a good week to bring someone who is far away from God. That's, uh, why, that's why every week we present the gospel because we believe God is calling us to reach people who are far from God and lead them to become fully devoted followers of Jesus. That's what we're talking about today. It's reaching people. And this scripture, the story that we're going to look at, is a really powerful story. It's about four guys in Mark's gospel. It's from Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, and let's just go ahead and read that. And then we'll dive into it and, uh, and get in more detail. Mark chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. So men came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four of them. Since they could not get into Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, Lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. I want to talk with you today about this value of reaching people. A value that says we will do anything short of sin to reach people who don't know Jesus. Now, I'd like for you to repeat that after me. Uh, just one more time. I'll say it. I want you to repeat it. I really want us to let this sink in to our minds and our hearts. We will do anything. We can do better than that. We will do anything. We will do anything. Good for you. Short of sin. Short of sin. To reach people. To reach people. Who don't know Jesus. Who don't know Jesus. That was so good, I want to do that again. <laughs> we will do anything. We will do anything. Short of sin. Short of sin. To reach people. To reach people. Who don't know Jesus. Who don't know Jesus. Now, we've done that so well, I want us to say it all together. No repeating after me. Let's just say it together. We, we will, will do anything, anything short of sin to reach people who don't know Jesus. <laughs> Did you like that back there? <laughs> Church, we said it together, and we want to accomplish this purpose of reaching people who don't know Jesus. We want to accomplish this together. It is not enough just to bring people to Jesus. We have to bring people to Jesus because we know who He is. And we know what He has, is, and will do in our personal lives. What He has is and will do in this church. We know what He really means in our life. 
He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the only way to our Father. So what we're going to do in the ne uh, for the next few minutes there is that we're going to look at two big thoughts that are essential for us as Christ followers. In order to love people into a relationship with Jesus. So if you're taking notes here, that's two big thoughts, okay? Got it? Two big thoughts. First thing, God calls those of us who are Jesus followers to bear some burdens, to care for those who are hurt, to help those who are in need. In fact, if you look back into the second, uh, uh, second chapter of the Gospel of Mark, that's exactly what we find in verse 3. It says, Some men came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four of them. Now, I want us to notice here. They didn't just say, Hey, buddy, I heard that Jesus is going to be in town. He's going to be putting on a concert. You ought to go buy a ticket and get a ride down there. They didn't do that, did they? Here's what they did. They got involved in his life and said, man, we're going to get you there. If we have to carry you, it might be five miles or maybe ten miles. I don't know how many miles it was. But we just don't want to get you to Jesus. We have to get you to Jesus. We care enough for you to do this for you. I think one of the bigger weaknesses for us as Christians in our witnessing today is we sometimes do what is called drive-by witnessing. I think all of us here have seen the horror of drive-by shootings. That which is taking place so many times every, every day in our country and, and many times in this weekend, I'm sure there have been drive-by shootings. We see all of the terror that particularly prevalent in inner city populations. But I'm afraid we can be guilty of what we might call drive-by witnessing. In other words, we drive by, roll down the window and go, Jesus loves you, dude. Go to my church. <laughs> Unfortunately, those are the nice ones. Then there's the rude ones, like, you're going to hell, turn to burn, sinner. You're going to hell where the worm never dies, and you'll be gnashing your teeth. Jesus loves you, but those are the self-righteous mean ones. Some of you have had that experience, haven't you? Those are the self-righteous mean ones. They just drive by. I've got to be honest with you. That will not work in today's culture. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that does not believe will be condemned. Here, I witnessed, right? I warned them. If they don't respond, it, it's on them. I did my part. What is that? Good intentions? Maybe. Effective? No. Absolutely not. People need to know that we really care about them. Not that we're trying to convert them to something. They first need to know that we actually care about them. You may say, you know, I can't speak, I, I get nervous, you know, I, I just stumble around, uh, I might drive them away. I like uh, this... Uh, uh, this saying that I remember from uh, one of my Bible college students, it stuck with me over, or, or uh, not students, but professors, Bob Stacy. And I, I'm sure it's not original with Bob, but it stuck with me because it's the first time I've heard it. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. In our scripture, we see four guys who really care about their friend. They just didn't want to get their friend to Jesus. They had to get their friend to Jesus. 
God, God is calling us to bear some burdens in order to get people to Jesus. And the second thing is, and, and some of you are really going to like this one, God is calling us to break some rules. That's right, you laugh. Uh, maybe you've been sleepy up to this point. Maybe you're a little bit drowsy up to this point in the sermon. Well, now is the time to wake up because I know a lot of you guys like to break the rules. I admit it. I love to break the rules. I never like rules. To be honest with you, I love to break the rules. Just admit it. Be honest. Come clean. Sometimes it is fun to break the rules. Unless there was a lifeguard on duty watching over me, I never waited 30 minutes after eating before going swimming. <laughs> All of my life. And I'm telling you, when I was a kid sitting in the front seat, I didn't wear the seat, pit, seat belt ever. My mama was my seat belt. All right? Some of you remember that, I can see. Have to stop fast. What do you do? Bam! <laughs> I broke the rules. I was the kid in school who ran with scissors in his hands. All the teachers <laughs> on But not only that, I had a lollipop in my mouth. I spiffed more magic markers than you can even count. <laughs> and I know maybe that explains a few things. Right? <laughs> In this story, we see four guys who massively break the rules to do whatever it takes to get their buddy to Jesus. Just look at Mark chapter 2, verse 4. Just look at what these guys did since they couldn't get their friend to Jesus because of the crowd. Watch this. They made an opening in the roof above Jesus. They went up and climbed up onto the roof. They opened this up. They were digging. They were clawing. Can you imagine Jesus there and see some light coming through and then particles starting coming down, chunks of things coming out of the floor around them? Then he sees this paralytic being lowered on a mat before him. Now don't get this. We just have to get our friend to Jesus. We just, and I know this is bad, uh, bad English. We just got to get our friend to Jesus. Jesus is teaching. People are listening. We can't get in. Let's go up on the roof. We can dig through the roof. Now, I'm not sure, but I got a pretty good idea that what these guys were doing was breaking the rules. <laughs> you don't go to somebody's house and start digging through their roof. <laughs> They broke the rules. I think they totally stunned and baffled the religious Pharisees, the makers and enforcers of burdensome rules. What I love about these guys is they are not allowing obstacles or man-made rules to keep them from doing what God has put them on earth to do. So Central Church family, we are committed to busting down barriers. We're willing to break the man-made rules. Then we have a church full of people that are crazy. That's right. Crazy like those four guys in our scripture. Those guys were crazy to do what they did. I believe with all of my heart that Jesus didn't give his life on the cross of Calvary just for us to go to church. Rather, he gave his life for us to be the church. As the church, we recognize that Jesus did not come for the healthy. No, he came for the sick. And we are all sick. We are all in need of his grace. When we recognize what he's done, our only reasonable response is to give him our whole lives. When Jesus said, you are the light of the world, 
I see a church that does not judge those who are without Christ, but loves them to know the grace of Jesus. I see a church full of people who will bear some burdens, will get messy and get dirty and get involved in the lives of people and break some man-made rules and barriers to get people to Jesus. Because I see a church full of people who knows what it means to be sick, that knows what it means to be healed, and knows what it means to be a dark, desperate sinner, and knows what it means to be forgiven. When we know that, by the grace of God, we will do anything short of sin to reach people who don't know Jesus. To reach people no one's reaching. We will be a light to the community, growing the body of Christ, which is the church, to grow in the likeness of Jesus, to be like him. Let's pray. Lord God, I pray that your spirit would do work in our church, that we would be lit on fire with a love of people who are far from God. Not with a judgmental attitude, but a heart that breaks and recognizes that Jesus came for sinners. And recognizes that we are all sinners and need his grace. I pray, God, that this message will not end with the conclusion of this sermon. <coughs> May your spirit open our eyes to see people who are hurting and in need. And recognize that they are opportunities to love with the love of Jesus earn their trust in one day and just maybe today to point them to Jesus. God, I thank you in advance for every person right now that is making a determination to start praying for those who need Jesus. God, I pray for those who have given up on somebody they love. Maybe it's a spouse, or maybe they think their dad could never come to faith, or they think their best friend could never come to Christ. And they think that uh, their children will never come back to Jesus. God, increase our faith to believe the impossible. Give us a heart that breaks for those who are far away from you. Recognizing that Jesus did not come for the wealthy and the healthy. But he came for sick. We thank you, God, he didn't come for the righteous, that he came for sinners like us. In Jesus' name. Here's the deal, guys. All of us are sinners. We are all sick people. That's, that's why Jesus came. That's why Jesus gave his life on the cross. He came for you. Know this. You don't have to be perfect to come to him. You come as you are, just like Levi the sinning tax collector came. Jesus loved the prostitutes. He loved the sinners. He loved the worst of the worst, the lowest of the low. He loved those that religion rejected. They came to him. They loved him. Because he first loved them. 
because he accepted them as they were. He didn't make them get all cleaned up first. He said, come to me, I'll clean you up. They were transformed by Jesus' love. They were set free from their sin. And, and I really believe this morning that in a kind of size, there's got to be somebody that's ready to break free. To break free from that that is holding you from that walk with Jesus. That's keeping you saying, I can't come to him until I get this fixed. My friend, if you will just confess your need for Jesus today, that you believe that he is the son of the living God. And if you will make a determination that, man, I can't live like this in bondage anymore. I want to be set free by the grace of Jesus. This invitation is for you. You can come today. You can confess the name of Jesus. You can be buried with Christ in baptism. They have your sins washed away. And they have His Spirit, Jesus, living in you, transforming your life, doing what you couldn't even begin to come close to doing on your own. Is this your breakout day? If so, don't let anything or anyone keep you from Jesus. Just come. Simply come as you are. As we stand and sing, will you come? Thank you.